Hello and welcome to part 4 of making a game in Corona SDK with Photon Cloud. Uh, I'm Tyler. You can um, go follow me on at uh, Tyler Makes on Twitter. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, etc. in YouTube. Um, if you're not on YouTube and watching this, you should go to YouTube and like, subscribe and all that. You can also go to TylerMakes.com and check out my site and the stuff I make. I should start posting more there. Um, anyway, uh, I just want to get that out of the way because sometimes I forget. Um, today we're going to continue with where we left off. When we last left off in the previous episode, which if you haven't watched the previous episodes, you should probably go back and start from episode one uh, because otherwise these will not make much sense. Um, okay, so we got connected to our room and we started sending data so that was good now what we want to do is we want to go down our to-do list the next thing is to show available rooms on screen and allow a player to select a room and allow a player to create a new room so what I want to do is give us uh, a basic setup for the rooms I'm gonna make the background Actually, let's make it a nice gray. Okay, cool. So this is for the game scene, but what we're going to do is we're going to add a new lobby scene. Do, 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 do. Call this hit lobby. And we need hit lobby scene. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a lobby uh, before the game where the player uh, selects a room. Oop, that's not where we want to go. I'm just copying this over from the game scene. Let's make a couple of little tweaks. Alright, for right now, this, this is just going to do just like our game scene, and it's going to create an instance of the lobby class, which is what we're going to use to set up and run our game. Or, I mean, set up and choose our lobby, or our rooms and stuff, uh, and then it's going to move over to the game scene when you're actually in a game. And then, so let's go ahead and save that guy. Add a lobby. We're going to make the lobby slightly green so we can distinguish it from the game. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I actually don't think we're going to want to be passing around the photon tool. Uh, which means we're also going to go back and change the game to also not have the photon tool. Because we're really only going to use one throughout, one instance of that throughout this app. We don't want to create it here. Instead, we're going to go right up here and just have a global version of it that we can use throughout the app. Cool. And we're going to go to the lobby scene. And we broke something. That's alright. Oh yeah, first we need to include the lobby. No, wait. Shouldn't have to. Ah. Uh, we have to include the um, photon tool if we're going to use it on the main. Let's go ahead and do that. What else is breaking? Oh, 
Oh, so this is complaining about class not existing, and that's because we're not we didn't put it in here. We should definitely have it oh we should definitely have it in here. Which actually I should be putting these below the comments. Um, because this needs access to class. Once it's loaded, it's accessible everywhere, so uh that's why it wasn't complaining before, but um we should have it there. This doesn't exist because we saved it. And we're not including it here. There we go. Okay, cool. Now we're back to where we were, except now everything's named lobby because it is actually the lobby that we're controlling. So that is a good start. Okay, so what I want actually, hmm, let's go take a look at the photon tool. Okay, so one of the things I want to do is I want to make a trigger to connect. We want that to do the things that we care about when, when connecting. So let's go ahead and take this chunk and do that. Okay, so we want we just want to connect on command, so it won't connect immediately when we start up. Um, this though needs to be back over here, and these two need to become this. Okay, so we're just uh, resetting everything and connecting once you call connect. And let me think about this. We definitely want to, let's keep track of the state here. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, let's do none here, then we'll do the end of this. It's created. And we'll have this one set it to connecting. We don't want it to keep trying to reconnect. So, for now, we're going to do this. Um, this is in the event that we called this multiple times, though. So hopefully, we're not doing that. Later on, we're, we might intend to call it multiple times. Like, you end a game, and you maybe want to disconnect and then connect again um, to go to the lobby. Uh, we'll see if that's, that's how we actually tackle that. But for now, we'll just put a little bit of protection in. Uh, to make sure we don't have issues. Okay, so there. Oh yes, this should be equals. Okay, good. So as you can see, it's it's not doing anything once it starts up because now we're not connecting immediately. So we're gonna go ahead and do that from the lobby. I'm gonna close the game stuff because we just need the lobby right now. We're getting on. And we probably don't need anything from there. Okay. So, we've created it. Now let's go connect. Yeah, great. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, one of the things I'm going to do, let's see, is pull over a previous project, which I don't think I have, I guess. 
Let's see. Oh, never mind. It's going to pull over our event list from our previous game. Oh, maybe I'll just do that. So, as a note and a reminder, we have everything on GitHub. If you want to go check out the code for any of this, feel free to do that. Uh, there's also the code for the other game project that I have been building on this stream. If you check out YouTube, you can see that. Um, and one of the things that I have is I have events in that. And like I've uh, explained before, like when you program a lot, you can start to build up a body of code that you use quite frequently. Um, if possible, it's always smart to put those into libraries, which actually I'd love to do that with my event stuff. Um, we're not going to do that in this video series, but we are going to reuse them. So. Uh, what I want to do is I want to, let me think about this, yeah, I want to have events coming from this uh, Photon tool. So, um, I'm just reusing the code from before, which is pretty simple. We just keep a uh, hash of um, different event types and their listeners, and you can just add on stuff as a listener and then you can dispatch events and they will trigger those uh, events. The, the only thing that we need is that the object for events um, if this isn't making much sense there is an episode in my previous series about events and you should just go watch that um, because it's a lot to explain and if you're doing this on your own you don't necessarily have to use events uh, I didn't include event deletion there that's fine we'll, we'll do that later um, let's go ahead and just put a reminder Okay, anyway, this gives us the ability to add events with a type, and <coughs> when that type gets triggered, um, we call that event. So this type might be connected, so we'll trigger an event that's the type is connected, this is the object, and what happens is we go in the events and we go, hey, what's, what's the listener with... Uh, well, here it is. What what are the listeners that have the name uh, connected? They're listening for connected. And we go through each of those and we call the function called connected with the data of that event um, from that object. So yeah, hopefully that makes some sense. We don't need lobby scene either. Okay, there we go. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is this photon tool. This is how the usage looks. Add event listener connected self lobby connected event. Let's just verify that this is working. And we're going to go into our photon tool. Um, let's see. Where do we send data? Oh, yes. Create room on state change. We care about is joined lobby. We're going to take out the part where we're currently we're automatically um, we're automatically joining a room. We're not going to do that in this. Uh, so let's go dispatch event, and this is going to be connected event. Name 
connected. Hmm. That's it, though. I wanted to list the rooms. Yeah, maybe we'll old. Hmm. I'm actually curious which one of these things comes first. The on room list, which tells gives us the room data when we connect, or the state change connected event. I think the state change comes first. So let's try that. Let's go like this, rooms equals rooms. And now when it connects, we are connected. Let's go event dot rooms. So we can see how many there are. And let's fix whatever bug we have. Unknown event, dis or unknown method dispatch event dispatch event photon tool hmm probably shouldn't be self wherever we did it dispatch event no it shouldn't be it should be tool because remember this is in inside here where tool equals the photon tool self in this case is the client, not the photon tool. All right, it does that. Okay, a lot of stuff happening. Oh, let's go ahead and cut out some of this stuff. Make this easier to read. Okay, so get rid of that. Also, yeah, when we're updated. We're just not going to send data. There we go. I should make things simpler. Okay, we'll go through here. Connection established. Interesting. Oh, this is the game. This is later. Okay, so what we want is going to be up here. Actually, you know what? Let me clear the log. Just make that easier. Okay. Connecting the master. Like right now, we're still connecting to a room. We care, though, is just connecting to the master state. Here we go. We are connected. And there are zero rooms. Um, and then it joins. It makes up a room and it joins it, etc. We're going to take that stuff out and we're just going to. Um, list the rooms so that this lobby can then show what rooms we have. What I'm curious about is if I can open another instance of the Corona Simulator easily. easily. Uh, Corona's. Yeah. Not entirely sure. There's an easy way to open a second instance on a Mac. Um, the reason I want to do that is because I want to have two connected clients so that uh, we can see the, the connection in the rooms, etc. Um, for now, we're just not going to worry about that. We're going to, uh, we're just going to use this event rooms to build rooms. I think that if we connect quickly, we we'll get it where the room is still open for a moment maybe maybe not I don't know let me go here and also cut off this connection so that we don't automatically uh, join a game so joining if there's a room join it okay yeah so this is what we're gonna do we're not gonna do any of that make a little note to ourselves uh, following code 
Uh, auto joins room if available. Else creates a room. Okay. So now it won't connect to the room. It'll just connect to the lobby, which is all we want, which is good. We also now want to add, we're going to want to add an event to periodically pull for new rooms. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to build all of the rooms. Okay, so let's go. Go ahead and save these here. And yeah. I think we need to do local. Is that right? Maybe that's right. I don't know. Goes one. Anyway, we're going to do, uh, we're going to iterate through the rooms, in rooms, and we're going to add wide. For now, we're going to do three. So this is just how many rooms. Uh, I'm going to make uh, blocks for each room, and so we're going to have three on a row. And then uh, just however many columns we need to make. For now, I'm going to limit it to uh, nine rooms and make it so that they all fit on the screen. Um, later, I might go back and add a scrolling uh, bit so that you can uh, you can see all the rooms. Um, but if you need to know how to do that, you can check out the code in the previous project, Bulbasaur, and um, see how it handles scrolling. But for now, for this one, we're just going to uh, limit it so that they all fit on screen. Okay, we're going to create some new rectangles. I'm going to give them a random color. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a utilities. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna call it tools because if I call it, um, let's call it hit tools. If I call it utilities, uh, we're gonna run into a really annoying thing of having to type utilities often, and utilities is not a simple word to type very uh, error prone. So we're going to call this hit tools. This is generally not going to have any of this information, though we might pass width and height later. Actually, let's go ahead and leave those just, just for now. Oh, actually, and maybe composer, because that'll allow us to change scenes. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do this. Actually, there's gonna, there's definitely not gonna be a create. Okay. So we're gonna add random color. Let's go to main. We're gonna add hit tools. Goals, new, not new. We don't use new in Lua. It's not like that. Uh, was it display dot width and display dot height and composer? Cool. What's that? And this is just going to return that dot. Random. Uh, I don't remember Lua's random. Just go look at the docs real quick. 
math.random oh yeah there's a seeded random and a regular one generates a pseudo random number uniformly distributed upper generates in integer between one and upper so we just we only need to put upper uh, and a color is just oh interesting let me think about that color uh, yeah um, so we'll just do one and two and then minus one that should give us a number between zero and one Wait. if you have no arguments generates a real number between zero and one oh, that's all we need no arguments now because that's just math random with no arguments you might wonder why would we make a tool for it um, that's a good question but I'm doing it because normally that's not the case and before they have changed things like uh, changed how colors work uh, currently it's 0 to 1 but before I'm pretty sure Corona had uh, 0 to 255 which there's good reason for um, but they're not doing that anymore so um, so here we are but by wrapping this in a tool if for some reason they changed back to that uh, it wouldn't be a big deal for us because we would have this also if we want to make some changes to random color um, to make it you know do some special stuff that's pretty easy as well uh, we're going to call these room buttons can have a new set of room buttons we're going to do This, of course, is how you just add one on to the end, is to take the length and add one. Okay. Uh, we don't want to make this the width and height. Let's go like this. Oh, yeah, I want to say uh, rooms in row. That's what that should have been. Bye bye. Rooms in row. That's kind of dumb. Rooms in row. Let's say we're going to call this room rows room columns oh yeah so we're gonna use this to do <sighs> we're gonna have an X actually we're gonna define this up here I think you can do this I don't like it but That'll be fine. So let's look at instantiate variables. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. A comma B and then equals. We'll just put equals one there. Oh, wait, they're all local one. Okay, so X equals um Right, we want one, two, three, and then four. We want to uh, dot. Oh, what am I thinking about? Oh, yeah. I think we have to do math up four, and dot rooms divided by. 
columns. Oh, that'll tell us what Y we're on. Uh, because if we do zero, one, two, well, one, two, three. Oh, that's so annoying. Uh, I'm going to put RI for real I. It's just going to be I minus one. Uh, it's fine that they're all being set to one to begin with because they're all going to be overridden immediately by what values they should be. Uh, this way we get we get it starting at zero. So zero, one, and two we want to be on the first y. Uh, so zero, one, and two divided by the room columns is going to get us zero, and then when it, we get three, three is going to give us one. Um, cool. So we're going to do self dot button height. Room button with math dot. Oh, how do we do that? What the heck is it called? Oh, I'm blanking on this so bad. Mod. But, oh yeah, can we just use the modification? Why am I blanking on this? Um, this would be dot rooms mod. Self dot room columns. I believe that's right. Uh, this just gets us the remainder of that. Uh, uh, this gets us the remainder of event dot rooms divided by event dot columns. Again, if any of that's confusing, I probably explain it better in my other series. So please do check that out if you just want to know more about general programming and making games. This whole thing is mostly going to be focused on creating um, a game with Photon, uh, but there's some things like this that we have to do anyway because you know we need to be able to show things so I want to make sure I show you that stuff. So, okay, cool. So, let's do this. Let's go self with divided by three. And just let make this the same size. Okay, let's go see what we broke. Do, 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 do. Okay, global self, a nil value, lobby 12, doo -doo -doo. yes. Okay, establishing, connecting. Okay, well it doesn't even run through this because there are no rooms. Ah, yes, let's go look at the photon tool. Uh, for right now, we are going to put this code back in. The reason why is we need it to create a room so that eventually we do have a room that we can see. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a nice way for us to keep a room open. I want to actually, like I said, run two instances of this. Let's go ahead and open applications and I don't have another install of this. It's not okay. So we're gonna do that. We're going to get a um second install. Corona SDK. 
if we can. Actually, well, I'll go do that later. For now, I'm not going to quite worry about it. I was hoping that if we restarted quickly, we would still see a room in existence. Actually, the room that we are joining. Yeah, see, we're connect getting zero, but we're getting joining. Okay, so something is up a little bit because this can't be empty if we're finding a room to join. So let's go take a look at this again. Make sure that we're getting what we should be getting. Let's go event.name. Make sure that we're at least getting its name when we are connected. We are connected. Event dot name is nine. That does not look correct at all. Let's go take a look at our event dispatcher. Hmm. <laughs> Name is connected. Rooms is rooms. Oh, there's a hashtag. <laughs> so it's the number, which is the number of characters in connected. Oh, that's right. Okay, so these are not... These rooms are not... Um, uh, in an array. Where we can just go through each one. They are actually in a key value pair. So we're actually going to make a room array. Which we are going to use. And that is what we're going to send. We're going to change this guy to room array. How do I want to tackle this? This is kind of annoying. Oh, here, yeah, let's leave this. Let's do this. Okay, so if there is a room in it, then we're going to dispatch this event. And we're going to return. And what we're going to do here is room array. Room array plus one. Just go with K. I don't know if we want. Huh. We're actually going to do this name. K. Equals. Oh wait, uh, let's go with data equals V. Because I want to also find out what data we get off of it. Um, we're going to go see what that data is. Okay. dot rooms that's great uh, I think that's all we need there right now we're gonna add this guy here then dot rooms okay
Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the value is. I'm afraid it's a table, which is why I'm doing this. Um. We'll do this just in case it isn't a table and it's some normal data. But if it's not, then we're gonna go see what what's inside it. Uh, because of what I want to know is if you get participants. That would be great. Alright, what's blown up at 37? No, this is totally wrong. Whoa, what happened there? There we go. Okay. Watch now, there's probably not even a room to connect to. Okay. Where is we are connected? Clear log. Okay. There we go. Hey, look, we got a room. And what was in it? The value was a table. And inside that table is the name <laughs> and the data. Oh, duh. Because we, of course, created our own. Okay, so let's just keep going deeper and see what happens. At this point, I could make this recursive and have it spew all the data, but I really don't want it to. Uh, I just want to see couple steps down see what's happening hmm Type checking, let's see if you can type check. Looks like you can do type. Okay, we're just gonna add this as a tool, because I do this a lot. Say print object, and then we're gonna say object depth. Depth is going to be our um, max depth is it going to be the thing that blocks it. Depth is what we're going to use to um, keep it from going too far. Oh, and actually, let's do this. Let's say, uh, uh, what do we want to call that indentation? There we go. Okay, so first we want to do this. If dev one. And indentation equals make an equal sign. Okay, and these also need to be this uh, not character. In other languages, it's quite frequently the not character is an exclamation mark. In Lua, it's not an exclamation mark. Not is not an exclamation mark. Uh, okay, so 
Should we want essentially this guy. I say if object type of object equals string. I don't know what the options are. I don't know if it's capital string. I'm okay, it's lowercase, so let's hope that that's what it is. I'm hoping Lua has a string repeat. we're doing is the indenter is a which sounds dumb probably not even correct it might be indenter indentation that's fine we're just going to use that i don't know if it's correct word but that's fine we're just going to add that so uh then this is going to print indentation and object and return and if it's type is actually is it just type yeah, that's right yeah if it's a string we or I mean a number we're just gonna go ahead and print it as well Sorry to take you on this detour, but this is going to be a useful tool for analyzing the stuff that Photon Cloud sends us um, because we don't always know what it's going to send us because the documentation doesn't tell every little detail. Um, sometimes maybe it does. I wonder actually. Room list says rooms, table, room name, room info, ah, name, address, max players, visible players, is open player count, oh, awesome, okay, well, I guess it does tell us what it gives us, that's okay, I'm going to try to finish this real quick, uh, if not, we will just move on, maybe, ooh, what's going on, I am resizing that, sorry, I just want to check the time, 48 minutes. Okay. Uh, we should have plenty of time for this, and this should be relatively not bad to knock out. So, um, if it's not one of those, then we know that we're going to have to iterate through it. We're going to look at the key values. We're going to do indentation. Actually, I want to use comma. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do it recursively. We're going to go self print object. This new object is the value. Max depth is the same. Um, what else we got? The indentor is the same. Indentation is now indentation concatenated with the indentor because we're going deeper. And depth is depth plus one. So we also need this. 
uh, if depth is greater than max depth then we just want to print this and we'll say max depth exceeded actually so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down here the reason why is I don't want to have max depth exceeded print a hundred a hundred times if there's like a hundred values at that depth so we just want to keep it from even going in um, beyond that. We actually don't want to do it for each of these keys either. Huh. Uh, okay, never mind. This might be fine. Let's do it up here. And we can do it this way. Okay. Because these are returns, you actually don't even need the else ifs. Um, uh, maybe that's fine. We'll do it like this. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I'm indicating that these... Uh, I'm trying to make it a little more obvious that that's what's happening here. These are like uh, frequently called guard clauses or something of that nature where they guard the execution from going. They, they stop everything below them from executing. Um, and they guard against like bad situations where you don't want to go deeper. So this keeps us from uh, going. Well, this specifically keeps us from going into infinite recursion. Um, so there we go. So then all we should have to do from the lobby is go hit tools. Print. What did I did I call it print room? No, good. Print object. With the object, which is meant rooms. And the max depth. We'll go four. And the indenter. I'm gonna put stars just to make sure that this is working. Should default to equal signs, but not to do that. Okay. Let's see what happened. Hit tools, unexpected, line 14. Hmm. Let's see if that, maybe that's the right way to do it. It's not the not operator. Unexpect oh, duh. Should be equals. Oops. Okay. <sighs> okay. Of course at this point the game that uh uh game lobby or whatever should have closed, so we're not even gonna get one refresh there we go math deck exceeded okay cool so here we go name hello world data is open seems really close for math max depth to ex be exceeded yeah let's put it like this greater than <laughs> uh oh. Got boolean. So we also need boolean on here. I knew I was probably forgetting one. 
<laughs> there are probably also smarter functions out here to do this. Uh, if you look up like print uh, Lua object or something, you can probably find someone who's made like a really fancy one. Um, I just want to write this one. It's relatively simple. Cool. See, here we go. Now we can see some data. So the name, data, empty room live time is open, player count, props listed in lobby, clean up cache on leave. Uh, this also has the name a layer deeper, so we actually don't need to do that. Since it's already got its name on it, yeah, that's cool. So let's go ahead and go here. Uh, we can just do data. We're going to just pass V. Um, get the room data because we don't need to pass the name because the name already exists there. And that's kind of what we cared about. So we have name. Great. And we have player count. And those are the two things that I wanted to show. Ooh, max players. Let's go see what uh let's go see how we do that. So in in the game that I'm building, we want the max players to be two. Cool. So it's an option that we send in our create call. So in our create room we're going to put uh, basic room options. I'm just going to put those here. If you like, if you want to make something more complicated, um, you know, you'll just have to edit this stuff. Uh, but I think for this game, we are going to. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty simple and not have different types of rooms. There's only going to be the one with the max players of two. Which that should, this should still have max player zero because we're still off, piggybacking off the room that already exists. Uh, which is great. Unless we just created a new one. It's kind of hard to tell when we're actually creating a new one because of how much logging there is. I kind of wish that they had made their client not log automatically. Oh, I wonder if there's a way to turn off logging. Ah, uh, see we can set the log level. I wonder if there's a way to turn it off. I bet there's a log level none. Uh, log level. Here we go. Fatal error, warn, info, debug, trace. All logging methods. All but trace. Only fatal methyl method. Okay, so we can at least limit it to fatal. Uh, and then that would uh, make it actually, well, yeah, let's go to this. Let's move down here. How do we do this? Uh, we're going to set log level. But we need common logger level. What is common in this case? Um, I think this would be self. Boot, huh? No. Hmm. I'm just not sure what this log level is actually looking for, or like where we can actually get these log levels, whatever they're, you know, this common log levels in the common dot logger, which I just don't know where that exists. Like maybe that is the logger, this logger. So let's go ahead and try that. Oh yeah, here we go. See, this is set to photon common logger. Great. So we can actually just do dot what what is it dot
Okay, so I think it's dot level dot fatal. Let's hope that works. We'll cut out all of their logging. Nope. Hmm. I wonder if it's the logger that we set log level on. Because it just said that's a nil value. Oh, that's a nil value as well. Hmm. Photon? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, set log level. Oh wait. Set log level. Oh, it's in the client. That's what it is. Yeah, that looks like it's it's cutting out a lot of stuff. Not all of it, but a good amount. Cool. That makes it a, a little easier uh, when we don't want to see the um, all those little logs. Okay, cool. Okay, so we got our name and we got our max players. Those are the two things that we care about. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, name. Did I just do something weird? Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, Hmm. We're going to need a display group for this. And so we're going to go into our lobby display. Uh, what is it? Display dot new group. I believe something like that. We'll say lobby display. We'll put the group. We'll insert lobby display. There we go. Make sure these are on there, and we're also going to add room text. <laughs> Again, I'm going to jump over uh, because I like just using code that we have um, in order to. easily write this. I don't have to think about it too much. Let's go text. Nope. I can shop item or something. Store item. Text. There we go. Yeah, see? This is a better example than... or is more useful. Oh, dang it. More useful to me than a lot of the ones that are online. I'm going to go ahead and use that. Yeah, we can call it name. I'm going to call it name view. I don't think we want to do that. Uh, We're just going to make the room buttons the actual new groups that we're going to 
um, add this stuff to well maybe not because we actually probably want to edit them which actually means that we need a room button which actually makes perfect sense okay Okay, we're going to take most of this stuff, put it up here. I call this button display. Uh, we're going to call this hit room button. We just need create and remove. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. We're going to change this room button to background. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, yes. Button display equals nil. We're going to make another new group for this guy. We're going to do the background. We're going to go button display. Insert the background. Now we're going to put label. Yeah, because we're going to need access to the label. Uh, let me just place name view with label. Great. Let's go ahead and put label on here. Oops. Okay. crud. We need to change all these labels down here to label view because we don't want to have it conflict with the um, actual text of the label which we're passing in. Okay, so that's pretty good. bottom here actually I guess this is fine and we need to set the background to the background great insert it great this removes it. We're also going to remove the label view from here. Great. Cool. Now we're going to go in here. Add our hit room button. And instead of doing all this junk, we're going to make this really simple. We're going to say equals new, or not new, dang it. Hit room button with a label is going to be rooms i dot name. Hmm. Maybe it's x and it's y location. Go ahead and add that here as well. Hmm. 
Okay, so it's X, it's Y. What do we call this room button with? Yeah, room button height. Okay, now we go to room button. Oops. Now we take the room buttons and add that to them. Perfect. Need the lobby display as our group. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna jump over to some code. I wanna get the um UI code for removing these. Oh yeah, that's pretty simple. I was thinking that there was some trick to it that I was forgetting. Maybe there is, and I'm still forgetting it. Hopefully this works. Okay. Okay, so we want to just remove our room buttons. Whoops. Right. If we go into a room button, make sure it's removing its background, its label, and its button display. Some of this stuff is probably overkill, but I don't know. Like we're manually deleting some of these stuff in a group, which I think would have gotten destroyed by the group anyway, but I find this useful. Partly because it would be destroyed anyway, except, like, it would be removed if we removed its parent, but the problem is this value would not get set to nil, I don't believe, so it would still exist and be hanging around in limbo, which is not what we want, so. Okay, so we get rid of the background. Room buttons. And the display. There we go. Okay. There's probably going to be some issues in there. I'm not going to worry about it. Ooh, hit room button not found. Oh, duh. Hit room button. Cool. Hit lobby twenty nine. <laughs> that should not be self group. I don't know why I changed that no accident. Okay, now there should be no rooms again. I'm sure. Oh, maybe, maybe not. That might be a problem if there is a room and it's just not showing up. Ah, okay. I was, I was breaking. Uh, line 45. What am I trying to do here? No idea. Oh, that's what I'm trying to do. Create. <laughs> like, why was that code there? Great. Okay, so now there should be a room and we should be creating it. <laughs> mm, I don't know if there was a room there when we started. Yes, okay. New rec to line 16. Uh, 
this should become width and height. What I'm also wondering is that we're going to get this room that still exists after we start, uh, which is what we're trying to see. Uh, I wonder if it still technically has a user in it. We'll see. Remember expected, but got nil. Oh, label XY height width. Label XY height width. Got nil. Does it tell me which one? Bad argument. Number four. Okay. Line, wait a minute. Line 16. So it's one, two, three, four. Ah. That's annoying. Okay, joined. Hey, there we go. That is a long name. Mm, there's a few things going on here that I don't like. Uh, but that's okay. We will fix those up real quick. So, first off, I actually want these to be zero and zero. Oops. Take the button display. All right, so we're going to try. I want to set the group to this X and Y location, which I think should be correct. Annoyingly, we have to run this twice every time because we need that shadow room hanging out. Uh, I definitely, for the next video, I'll find out uh, how easy it is to install a second version of Corona and just have that running. Yeah, that's annoying. I think that we also have to do this. Oops. Background at uh, anchor zero, anchor y. X, Y. So I think these are off screen because of that. Interesting. So the text is in the right place, the background is not. Hmm, fascinating. Um, that might be okay. Okay, um, so let me just check the time. Okay, cool. Uh, what do we want to do? Uh, I want to fix this real quick. Shouldn't be too bad. These headphones are not the most comfortable. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let's see.
Okay. Uh, able view. Hmm, that's so weird because it looks like the text for one. What happens if we don't align it left? Nothing. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Well, then we'll align it left. Okay, so what I'm looking at is I want to see something real quick, which is I'm gonna, we're going to try this. We're going to set it to five, and we're going to set this to just use the one room to do it a bunch of times, just because I want to see what exactly happens. Oh, okay. So the text isn't being added to the group. That's what's happening. That's why it's not being added the right place so that's because this inserts that instead of label view there we go so I knew that because like all the text was up here and it wasn't at all related to the blocks now it's related to the blocks now we have the thing of again the first one is not there where it should be which this I minus one should have made that difference So let's find out why did not. Okay, so, oh, you know what? Well, no, that's not right. So why would it be I minus one? Let's see, if we don't mess with that, then it should be off by two, which would look ridiculous. Oh, crud. Oh, this is exactly why. We're not using RI, we're using I, should be using RI. Just for that location calculating, nothing more. Oh wait, yep, right here. There we go, I was like, I know there's two. Okay, we wanted to use this uh, I minus one. So yeah, if I go and do this and change it again so that we make five of them, they'll be in the right place. There's no room. Okay, so now what's going to happen is when we have a room, we're going to be able to click onto it and connect to it. Now the interesting thing is because it's us that's connected to it initially anyway, I think when we see a room, it's actually going to be a dead room. So it's going to actually be important for us to go through and uh, create, well actually I don't know, because it, it was possible to click and connect onto these, or I mean not click, but uh, automatically connect to those rooms. So we're going to try that. Um, da, 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 da. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I'm thinking we might want to use their button widgets and not our own. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do that. And the only reason I want to do that is because there's a whole bunch of cleanup and stuff, and there's the event triggers um, that we'll have to go through and add. Uh, and their widget seems to be working pretty well. Uh, I think that's. I think we started using it on um, the Bulbasaur project. Actually, this might be right. No, oh, that's not it. Um, and if you go and watch my previous videos, you can find out like why I have 
some of my own buttons created instead of using their widget buttons that uh, Corona SDK comes with. Um, but I think we started using those, although here's plenty of places where we're not using those. Interesting. View, add event listener, touch. Yeah, so there's somewhere we did this manually. Hmm, okay. Well, uh, we'll take a look at that next time. So we started getting this set up so we can actually see the rooms in our, our uh, lobby. And next time we're going to go through and add uh, touch. So we got rid of this guy. I'm gonna move this down to done. Uh, so we're now showing available rooms. We're gonna on the next one we'll get to selecting a room and creating a new room from like when there's one that that doesn't exist yet. Uh, I'll show you how to do that, and we'll just keep hammering through these things. Um, yeah. Uh, again, like, subscribe, etc. Share, do all that so that people see this. Remember to go check out the code and use it as you wish. And this project is called Hitmonchan. Um, and again, there are label or tags for each version that we, or each episode that we have. And uh, Bulbasaur is the bigger project on making uh, a full game. Feel free to go check out that guy uh, and see what it's like. Um, there's a whole lot of great code in there, so feel free to take it and make whatever you want. And let me know what you do. All right, uh, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.